So in this time temperature defrost, two things that need to take place in order for it to go into defrost. Time and temperature. Now, on this control board, it has timings. I don't know if you can see down there. 30, 60, 90. Basically, when you put the switch on there, it's going to tell this logic to disregard anything to do with defrost until it's accumulated a runtime selected by this pin. Meaning, if the system runs for 15 minutes and shuts off, and it's set for, say, 30 minutes, that means it still has another 15 minutes of runtime to generate before it even considers going into defrost. So, that's the first part, which is time. The second part is temperature, which you have these two pink leads are a defrost thermostat, and basically it's an open and close switch, just based on temperature. Closes on a temperature drop, opens on a temperature rise. I'm not going to say specific temperatures because every defrost system is a little bit different. But basically what happens is after the logic cycle counts the time, once that time has been reached, it looks for this defrost stat. If this defrost thermostat is closed, the system will initiate a defrost. If this defrost stat is open, meaning either the stat is bad or that the condenser coil, excuse me, the evaporator coil in heating mode on this heat pump um, is warm enough that it doesn't require a defrost. So basically what it will do is it will start its timing over again. So this unit has been running for a little while right now. Um, it's about 38 degrees outside. So in order to test the defrost, there's a couple different ways you can do it. You can either, one, come out on a cold day, let the unit run for 20 minutes or so, check your pressures, watch your suction pressure once it drops below, say, 32 degrees, um, give it a few minutes, you might get a little frost on the coil, then you can try to short these test pins over here. Basically, these test pins are just speeding up this timing logic in the control board. Now you don't want to jump them out, you just want to shorten them together. There's two tiny little pins. You just want to gently touch them together. Um, so that's one way. Another way is that you can disconnect this defrost stat from the board and use a jumper wire. Jump each pin that's located on the board. Jump both of those pins together. And that's basically simulating a closed defrost stat. Once you jump those together, then you can short the test pins, fast forward the timing, and it will initiate a defrost. The third way is what I do commonly, especially when I do maintenances and it's fairly warm outside, and it's not quite as safe, most people would say, but what I do a lot of times when it's warmer outside, because when you jump out this sensor, you're not actually testing the entire defrost system. You're just basically eliminating the defrost thermostat and just testing the board. So what I like to do is disconnect the condenser fan motor while it's in heating mode and cause the pressure and temperature of this coil to drop drastically, closing this switch. And sometimes you have to let it go for five or 10 minutes without the condenser fan, but uh, letting it close this switch naturally, basically simulating cold weather. Then once that switch is closed, short the test pins. So, I don't have any gauges on this unit or anything right now, I'm basically just going over this and hoping that it's cool enough that I don't have to, but what you would do, and I only have one hand right now because I'm holding the camera, is what I would typically do is once this unit's ran for a while, you would take your leads, just poke them right into those two little holes, like I said I'm doing it one handed so I'm not going to, poke them into those two little holes and see if your defrost stab's closed. If it's not closed, there's no reason in shorting these test pins. Once it is closed, then you can short these test pins. You just want to short them to the point that the system initiates a defrost and then you want to remove the, the jumper or whatever you're shorting them with. Um, I see lots of people sometimes actually just leave them jumped together or leave them shorted out. You're not going to hurt anything when you do that, but basically you're just constantly speeding up the time. Not only speeding up the time until you reach the, uh, the defrost cycle, but you will also, once it's in defrost, it will speed up the 10 minute 
defrost time and terminate defrost so you'll kind of see the unit do some crazy things it'll go right into defrost then it'll turn around and click and come right out of defrost a couple seconds later go back in over and over and over again so basically what you want to do is short those test pins until the system goes into defrost as soon as you hear it go into defrost you remove your test lead or your jumper let the system go through defrost typically on most time temperature defrost or most residential defrost in general it's going to come out of defrost for one of two reasons either temperature gets warm enough on this defrost set that it opens or you reach a 10 minute accumulated defrost time where the system deems that that's long enough and it will terminate defrost regardless whether this defrost set is open or not so I'm going to try to def short these test pins and see if we can get her to go into defrost. And this GoPro is not focusing right now, so I apologize for that. And you do have to be patient. There you go. Now it's in defrost. And like I said, it'll stay in defrost until this sensor gets warm enough to open. And I'm just going to do it for the sake of speeding up the time is once this switch opens it will immediately terminate defrost so if I pull it off the board it immediately terminates defrost that's just basically showing you without having to wait because it is cold out here so it, it could take a few minutes just hearing this thing in defrost so um, yeah that's pretty much pretty much uh, time temperature defrost in a nutshell one other thing you need for defrost that I don't think I mentioned is this board needs 24 volts to power the timing logic which means you need a constant 24 volts between R and common I've seen a lot of times when people are trying to diagnose these boards that they'll keep shorting these test pins their stats closed it doesn't go into defrost they change the board and then turn around and have the exact same problem um, if you are having a defrost issue where it won't go into defrost um, and you're thinking that the stat is fine and you want to uh, you definitely want to make sure that you have 24 volts going to the board if you have a broken R wire or broken any any wire loose connections or sometimes I see when heat pumps are replaced they don't even bring an R wire outside sometimes um, so that's also just something to keep in mind when you're troubleshooting the defrost cycle some things you have to watch out for is these sensors will go bad they don't go bad too much as far as the mechanical parts of it that I see most frequently what I see is you'll develop a wire rub down inside of the cabinet um, down near the compressor and it will cause a short or you can break the wire and it will just cause the board to either not go into defrost or sometimes continue to go into defrost every 30 60 90 minutes depending on what your board set for now different areas will set their timings differently um, heat pumps that are farther up north may need to go into defrost a little bit more versus units down south um, some people feel that depending on humidity when you get farther down south you need a shorter defrost cycle I worked in Virginia for about 10 years and I've been down here in South Carolina for about seven now and pretty much between 60 and 90 is, is, a, is a good spot. Placement of the defrost thermostat is uh, pretty important. A lot of times you'll see them positioned in the wrong place. Typically where you want to put this stat, if you have one that falls off or something like that, typically what you want to do with the stat is you want to put it usually somewhere in the center of the coil, um, but the, the way to find the best spot is to cause the system to start freezing up the outdoor coil you'll start getting bands across the coil and basically what you want to do is you want to put the defrost stat in a location on the uh, the tube sheet where the coil first starts to freeze up is usually the last part to melt and that's usually where you want to put the uh, the defrost stat it's a ideal spot for it because if you put it somewhere say at the top of the coil or something like that um, it may open the switch while you still have frost and ice on the lower level and then same thing at the bottom so typically it's somewhere in the middle but you can always uh, disconnect the fan cause the coil to start frosting up and then see 
where the frost accumulates first and then where it's last to leave once the uh, system goes into defrost. That's generally a good place to put it if you don't know where it goes. A lot of coils will have a dedicated um, extension on the, uh, the tube sheet or on the manifold that sticks out and you, you can usually see where it, was, uh, where it was supposed to go. But I hope that helped. Um, I'm going to make a video on demand defrost as well. I uh, just have to wait till I come across one. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Other than that, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.